Fast 6 is once again directed by Justin Lin, and it is the sixth in the series of the Fast and Furious movies, you know, just in case you guys couldn't tell. The title of the movie is Fast 6, so I feel like you should be able to tell that this is the sixth movie in the franchise, but ah, I digress. The original crew is once again back for another big-ass adventure. You've got The Rock, you've got Vin Diesel as Dom, you've got Brian O'Connor back, you've got Tez and Roman back, Ludacris and Tyrese respectively, you've got Mia back, sort of, <laughs> Giselle and Han are back, and you've got Letty. Letty is back! In case any of you you missed Fast and Furious 4, Letty died in that movie. That was a big focal point of that movie was Letty's death. In this movie, Letty is back. Letty has returned. Oh, thank God Michelle Rodriguez is back. I just, I couldn't have lived with myself in the Fast and Furious universe if Michelle Rodriguez wasn't in it. Oh, we miss you so much, Michelle. And by we, of course, I mean me and my penis. So basically, this one follows all the characters in different areas than they were in the last movie. All of them are millionaires now. All of them are off doing their own thing. Dom is banging the really hot Brazilian chick from the last movie, Elena. She's decided to quit being a police and shack up with Dom. Brian and Mia finally had their baby and now they're like officially retired. Roman is in a plane with its Roman bitches on the side of the plane. Taz is halfway around the world being like a local rich Robin Hood to all these different places. Hobbs is back with Gina Carana as his partner and he comes to Dom and he's like, hey Dom, I got a job for you. Yeah, you remember your sexy ass ex-girlfriend? Yeah, she's alive. Yeah, and she's working with this really dangerous crew led by this guy, played by Luke Evans, who's called Owen Shaw. Owen Shaw is this former military dude who's got like this high-tech crew of fast drivers. Think of it like Dom's crew, except like they're evil twins, kind of like Roman says later on in the movie. And so Hobbs comes to Dom and he's like, yeah, I need your help. I need your team so that we could track these guys and stop them from acquiring some big piece of tech or whatever that's supposed to... I don't know, blind electricity or shut off the lights in a country or something? Thus we have our movie. Dom has to recruit his team and they have to jump back into action to save Michelle Rodriguez. It's kind of hard for me to even review this movie. I feel like I should just talk about my favorite parts of the movie because this, as it stands here today, is my favorite Fast and Furious movie of the entire franchise. The franchise is versatile, man. For a lot of people it's one, for a lot of people it's five, for a lot of people it's seven. But for me personally, number six takes the cake. It's my favorite Fast and Furious movie. This one has the best action action scenes, it has the best character moments, it has the perfect blend of humor and action, and it has the most crowd pleasers. If you guys don't know what a crowd pleaser is, a crowd pleaser is a moment in a movie that makes the entire audience either cheer or applaud or laugh or just get that feeling in your heart like, yes, that yes feeling. This movie has so many of those moments, I don't even know where to start with those, but I suppose I should start with the characters. Dom is just as badass in this movie as he was in the previous movies. In fact, he might be twice as badass in this movie because he's more motivated. He's focused. His mission is Letty. That's all he he cares about in this movie it's all about getting letty back and again if your ex was as fine as michelle rodriguez that would be your mission too it's kind of funny with brian and mia in this movie because obviously you know they have their kid in the beginning and then they're trying to settle down and then dom goes to him he's like hey i need your help but i don't want to involve you and then brian just kind of jumps head first back into that life and you could sort of see the seeds being sown for brian and his eventual retirement in furious 7 you can see it it's not there yet but you can see it these little seeds are there zell and han have been traveling around the world they're like an official couple now they have really great chemistry together they've grown together as a couple in the last movie it's great to see them coming back and they keep teasing that whole hey we should go settle down in tokyo wink tokyo if you catch my drift about tokyo that's you you should be able to pick up what I'm putting down. And Tez and Roman are back as the comic relief. I mean, it's all great. All these characters, once again, just like the other movie, it is so great to have these characters back because all these characters have such tremendous chemistry with each other. Yeah, and they're going to need that chemistry against a guy like Owen Shaw. Oh my God, this dude is such a badass. I don't think I'm overstating things when I say that the villains in the Fast and Furious franchise, for the most part, suck ass. I mean, most of them are really terrible. But in this movie, finally, we have a worthwhile villain. Again, he's like an evil version of Dom. Dom is all about family and togetherness and loyalty and that's his code and he fights by it and he lives by it. Owen Shaw, this guy is all about precision and efficiency. He's all about getting the job done. He says early in the movie, he's like, well, you could just swap out a bad part and put another part in if you're fixing an engine or something. That's how he thinks about his crew. I mean, he's really cold-blooded. He's really heartless. He's really efficient. That's like the best word I can think to describe him as. And this guy is really smart, man. He's always thinking three and four moves ahead of Dom and his crew. So that immediately creates a villain that you can not only empathize with and understand where he's coming from, from. But you can also understand this guy because this guy is on top of things. He represents a legitimate threat to Dom and his friends, and that's why you're invested in this movie and the action scenes. Gotta talk about Hobbs, because Hobbs is back in this movie. In the last movie, he was kind of an antagonist to Dom and the rest of his family. In this movie, they're working together, and it's so great to see Hobbs interacting with the rest of these people. It's so great to see him kind of unofficially join the family by the end of the movie. You can see that moment at the very end of the movie where he and Dom are talking to each other, and Hobbs is like, yeah, 
I never thought I'd trust a criminal till next time and you can just tell that they just want to have a bromance moment and just hug it out or kiss it out or you know clash their muscle arms together or whatever the hell you do when you're big like that and you have a bromance once again he seems like he's bathing in baby oil for the entire movie I have a theory that Hobbs wakes up in the morning before he puts his clothes on and he just uses lotion made out of human sweat and he pours it all over his body so that all of his muscles are just glistening in every scene I don't have any proof for this it's just it's just my personal theory about the rock and his sweaty ass muscles luckily in this movie they do address that Roman has a couple of jokes where he jokes about the rock he's like oh, why do I smell baby oil in one scene at the end of the movie he's like oh somebody better hide your baby oil and then the rock is like yeah you better hide that big ass forehead you can just tell the way that Ludacris laughed at that part you could just tell that that part was ad-libbed and that part was actually not planned and that was just improv by the actors on set again you can pull that off if you've got great chemistry and once again I love these characters and I love the way they interact with each other so many great moments I mean obviously you gotta go to the girl fight between Letty and Gina Carana in the subway I mean that is just a two hot ass women beating the shit out of each other in a subway tunnel I mean that's the American dream right there people that's what everyone should want in life got the other great fight that happens during that same time period where Roman and Han are trying to fight this Asian dude in the middle of like the subway station or whatever and he kicks both of their asses and if somebody kicks me and my friends ass like that I'm probably never going to get into a fist fight ever again psychologically Roman and Han should be down for the count for like the rest of the foreseeable future you've obviously got the tremendously awesome highway scene where you've got Owen Shaw and his crew hijacking a freaking tank and I just love Tez's reaction Tez has the perfect reaction to them having a tank Guys, we gotta come up with another plan. They got a tank. That action sequence culminates with Letty somehow flipping off of the tank and Dom somehow jumping across a highway to catch her and landing on a car on the other side and they're both pretty much, you know, alive. Again, that unrealistic quality to the action sequences is still here and again, you're still gonna be going like, yeah, it's, it's no way people would survive that but I don't give a damn because it looks really, really cool. I'm sure if any of the stunts in this movie were actually real that people would be dead like within a scene or so and the movie would only be 10 minutes long. The action is absurd, it's ridiculous but it's so well filmed it's so well shot from the fight scenes to the car chases to the explosions to the stunts everything is just not only bigger than life not only ups the scales it also just ups the stakes of everything like the last action sequence in the movie which involves the world's longest runway oh, seriously this runway goes on for like 30 it's legitimately like a 20 minute action sequence at the end of the movie it's this huge action set piece and there's a plane that they're trying to bring down this plane before it takes off Owen Shaw and his crew are trying to escape and there's like fights on the plane and then there are cars outside the plane trying to bring the plane down yeah it's completely unrealistic and doesn't make sense and it's it's complete bullshit but again you're having so much fun at that point why worry about it honestly this movie has the most crowd pleasing moment I think in the entire franchise when it's Hobbs and Dom versus Owen Shaw and that big wrestling dude that I forgot his name oh my god such a great fight I mean not only are they having great one-on-one -on -one fights but then the moment where Dom picks up the big dude and then the rock just goes kablow oh my god so crowd pleasing I mean, every, when I saw that in theaters, everyone in the audience cheered their asses off. Everyone was so happy. In the end, it's great to see Michelle Rodriguez back. She's still Letty. She doesn't have her memory back, but she still has that same badass attitude that Letty has always had and still sexy as hell. <laughs> it's kind of great to see Elena at the end where Elena's like, oh, I got to go be a cop and this is who I am and I got to leave. And if I'm Dom, I'm sitting there like, hey, just join us. Come on, just stay with us. We can have one big threesome family. I mean, one big family. We can all just be one big family. Come on, just you, me. Michelle Rodriguez, I mean, what's not to like? And Fast 6 has the most crowd-pleasing moments of any other film in the franchise. In my opinion, it has the best action sequences, it has the best balance of humor and action, it has the best character interaction in terms of chemistry goes. I'm gonna get my highest rating because it is my favorite Fast and Furious movie. So, Fast 6, give it to Superman Prime. Alright guys, that is my review for Fast and Furious 6. Alright, pick a stunt in this movie, any of the action stunts in this movie. Which one do you think that you would be the best suited to survive? Let me know down below. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel. And stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.